everyone. My name is Jane Gu from Pasadena Public Library. And today you are going to learn how to use a baking soda bath and shaping pretzels. So um, it is April, which is National Soft Pretzel Month. I actually didn't know that before we selected to do this lesson. And the way that we're gonna be making it today <clears throat> is not the traditional way that you would be making soft pretzels. Um, most of the other ways is they would require a long rest period uh, for the pretzels. What we're gonna be doing today is using a baking soda bath to first start to um, cook it a, a bit. And this baking soda bath, and I'll talk a little bit more about it when we're about to start it, is pretty similar to how bagels are made. So um, if you find a bagel recipe and you wanna try it, um, you'll have the, you'll sort of already know how to do it. So what we're gonna be doing today is we need to, um, we're gonna be using yeast, but we're not going to be um, activating it, meaning we're not adding sugar into it and then letting it sit there for like 10 minutes. What we're gonna do is we're going to sprinkle the yeast pack into warm water and just let it sit for a minute. And I'll drop these instructions in the chat. And then what we're going to do after that is um, whisk in some of the other ingredients. So if you've um, done um, one of the lessons before that we've used yeast in, in the previous lessons, we had um, activated it and it, it looks a little bit different. It looks foamy when you activate the yeast. And activation, um, um, the way we activated it in our, our previous lesson was we added sugar and that was a, that's essentially food for the yeast. We are going to add sugar into this one. It's just not gonna go into the water at the same time as as the yeast is. So here are the steps. We are first going to um, get our warm water. It is going to be approximately 100 to 110 degrees. It doesn't need to be exact. It's essentially just a, a little bit warmer than room temperature. And then we're going to pour in the yeast and then just let it sit. And we're gonna whisk it and then let it sit for a minute. Um, and then we're gonna whisk in one tablespoon of brown sugar, one teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to melt one tablespoon of butter and, um, and then add that in there. In your ingredients kit, you should have received, I don't, I didn't actually um, bring one home, but it should be a little baggie um, that has some uh, like brownish kind of granules in it. And I don't think it's labeled. Um, and a little bit of white um, granules as well. That's, that's a salt. I don't know if it, there's a, yeah, there's two, there should be two small baggies in there. One has, um, it's it, the small one with the brown sugar in it. That's the, uh, it's already combined in there. So you don't need to um, measure those. So you're going to need a wooden spoon and a bowl. So what we're going to do is I am going to measure out half a cup of drinking water in this little cup here. And then I'm going to pour it into my kettle and I'm going to heat that up and then I'm going to add a, a, just a cup of uh, a room temperature water and see if that is the right temperature. You don't need a thermometer, but I am going to um, take the temperature just in case. You'll need a whisk. Okay, here is one cup of room temperature water. Half cup of hot water. I believe this will actually be the right temperature. Yep, exactly 98 degrees. So this is perfect. So what you're gonna do after is sprinkle in your yeast. And then whisk it. And then I'm just gonna wait one minute. I'm timing it for one minute. And I'm going to get the rest of the ingredients. So we'll need one tablespoon of melted butter. Thank you. 
So what I'm going to do is get your butter. And of course, there's the measurements on the side. Just get one tablespoon of that. And then I'm going to just put it in the microwave. All right, it's already been a minute. It's okay, you can actually leave your, um, your water and your yeast there longer if you need to. But I'm gonna put this in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then I'm gonna keep checking up on it just to make sure it's not burning and also melt it. So we're gonna do that. Yeah, so that's 30 seconds. And it looks like it'll probably just melt if you just stir it, so. All right, so that's the butter. And then we are going to put in one tablespoon of your brown sugar. And and one teaspoon of salt. And again, if you got the kit from the library, it, those two ingredients would be in the little baggie. So there's the brown sugar. Here's the salt. And then here is the butter. And we're gonna whisk it all together. So the next steps are we're going to add the flour, but we're gonna do this in increments. So I'm gonna do about a cup at a time. I'm gonna do three cups, one cup at a time and stir it in. You're going to need to switch from your whisk to your, um, your wooden spoon though, um, after, at least after the first cup. So I've already opened my little pack of flour. I don't know, you can see my screen there, but um, so I'm going to um, measure it out one cup at a time. There's one cup. Whoops. I'm gonna switch to a wooden spoon. So this is the second cup that I just put in. And this is the third cup. Now the last cup that we're going to put in, we're not gonna put it all to get all at once. We're gonna do it in smaller increments because we're going to, we need to get the right um, consistency for the dough. Um, it's gonna be about three quarters to another cup. And I'm gonna put, do it in, like I said, smaller increments, like a couple of tablespoons at a time. All right, so again, so far I only have three cups in here. And if you can see from my bowl, it is sticking to the bottom of the bowl. So we wanna make it so that it's not as sticky. So I'm going to add in, First, I'm gonna measure it for another cup, but I'm not gonna, again, not going to put it all in. And 
you might actually need more. I think um, the last time I did this recipe, I actually ended up using a little bit more than the extra cup, but that's my one cup. And I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit. And I'm gonna keep doing this until it's, it's not as uh, sticky. And you don't wanna do it too fast because you, um, wants, you don't want it to be too dry either. but I am almost nearly there. Um, I probably put in about three and a half cups at this point. Uh, it's still a little sticky, but let me test it. So if I press on the dough like this, I can't really see it in there. And it springs back, it's ready to knead. This is not really ready. Yep, it's too sticky. See how it sort of sticks to me? So this is too sticky. So you do have to be careful once you kind of hit that um, after three cup mark. But right now I'm still trying to test this and I think my dough is ready. So, and let me take a look. It's what I put in there was about three and a half cups. 
So you're going to need your flour nearby. So when you're kneading it, um, it doesn't stick, but let me hold this closer. So there it is. And I'm pressing my finger down and I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it sort of bounces back. So this is ready to knead. So I'm going to turn this out onto my board here. If you've accidentally put in too much um, too much flour and it really is indeed too dry, add a little bit of water in the opposite way, like one tablespoon of water until it's it's not sticky anymore. So I'm going to sprinkle my board. So our next step is just to knead it for three minutes. It's really quick. Um, if you have a pastry cutter, you can use this to sort of uh, get it off the board if it gets stuck. If you don't, that's okay. It's, it'll come together, it'll be fine. So what I'm gonna do is just set a timer for three minutes and we just need it um, to be three minutes um, approximately. So it's okay if it's a little bit more or less. So we're gonna start kneading it. Oops. Yeah, my dough is still a little sticky, so I am going to add more flour as I go along. So essentially when uh, the dough starts sticking to your hand, you can sprinkle a, a little bit more flour and keep kneading it. Oh, there's my timer. I'm just going to incorporate the rest of this flour. And then just make it into a ball. And then you're going to cover it lightly with the tea towel if you have one or um, with some plastic wrap.
All right, well, we're going to time that for 10 minutes. 10 minutes is the minimum, so anytime after 10 minutes is fine. While we wait for the dough to rise, again, that's 10 minutes, um, at least 10 minutes, we are going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees. I'm going to do that. Then take nine cups of water, and it could be sink water, that's fine, in a pot. Um, and we are going to add half a cup of baking soda. So in your kits, you're going to receive a little uh, container that looks like that with baking soda and just go ahead and add it in. And turn on your stove and just let that boil. Then we're going to line two sheet pans with a silpat or a greased liner. Again, if you um, don't have uh, like a spray to spray your, your uh, pans with, um, you can just use the butter that, it came, that, that your kits came with. You'll only need another about two tablespoons for the cinnamon sugar topping later on, but everything else um, is extra. Or um, you can use silpats, which are, I, I would say, would probably be better if you had it. So I'm going to do that. Then you're going to need a bowl or a tray. I just have another baking tray. Um, we're not going to bake it. And you're going to put in three quarters cup of sugar and one and one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. And uh, that in your kit should have already came mixed together. half a cup. Oops, three quarters a cup. Quarter cup. One teaspoon of cinnamon and a half. And just mix it. And you can set this aside, it's for the very end. But our next step is we are going to um, shape the pretzels. So let me put those instructions in. Once your timer for your 10 minutes, rest time has gone up. The next step is to shape and cut the dough. Um, and we're going to shape them into pretzels. So here's my dough. I'm going to sprinkle it with more flour so it, I know it's not going to stick. Okay. And then I'm going to cut in half. And right now I'm just going to work with half of it. So um, the entire dough makes about 12 pretzels. So since I'm only working with half right now, this will make six. I'm just going to cover up the other half since I'm not using it right now. 
going to cut this into six pieces. Again, if you don't have one of these things, you can just use like this or a butter knife, it's fine. Here's my six pieces. And then make sure that my board is not gonna stick and we're gonna shape them. So I'm gonna roll them all out. I'm gonna, hopefully I remember how to shape them. I think my dough got a little too dry after I sprinkled in that last piece of flour. But what we're gonna do is try to shape this until it is as long as, as thin as you can get it. Um, it's probably going to be about the length of the board that I have here. And that's really just so um, when you're baking it, it bakes all the way without it burning. Um, so if it's too thick and you are trying to bake it all the way, it'll probably burn. Yeah, I probably did put too much flour in it. So if you haven't like done that part yet, why don't you like not do, not sprinkle it with flour until you start cutting it and seeing how sticky it is. All right, I think this will be fine. Okay, shape pretzels. We're going to do one, two, that. I'm gonna take this part and, oops. Tuck it like that, and that's done. We'll just set it aside. This one's gonna be a little bigger because the dough, it was a lot more dough than the other piece I worked with. I'm gonna do one, two. So I do want to just explain the process of what we're doing next before you start, um, because it goes really fast. So here are the instructions for the next part. So what we're gonna be doing is we are going to drop these pretzels, I'm gonna do two at a time, into the boiling water of uh, baking soda boiling water. And um, because it's, it's only gonna be in there for about 20 seconds, um, um, I don't want to explain anything as we are doing it. So um, I'm going to get my 
watch ready and I'm just going to look at the, the second timer on it. If um, you don't have, um, if you have a regular timer, you could just set like a stopwatch and just look at, just use it or just count. 20 seconds is fine. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, and you're going to need, let's see. You can either use tongs or a slotted spoon. Just something to get the, the pretzels out. So when you boil it, it causes the dough to instantly puff up and then it starts to form a, cr a crispy crust and finishes. And then afterwards we finish it in the oven. So again, this is a similar process to making bagels. Um, so you can you even add like other flavors into your water, like honey or, um, or syrup, and it gives your um, crust a little bit of more flavor. We're not gonna do that today, but um, just to give you an idea of, of what that does. So we're gonna do that right now. So my water is boiling. Let me move this. I am going to get my stopwatch ready. And just look at the timer. So there's one and two. All right, it's been about 20 seconds. So let me go ahead and whoops, mine fell apart. So for cinnamon sugar ones, you're not going to do anything to this. You're just going to pop it in the oven. For um, the salted ones, you're just going to sprinkle the salt on right now. You should have gotten a little uh, baggie of uh, coarse salt. Um, and you can just sprinkle, sprinkle it onto, directly onto the pretzel, and then you're going to bake it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do three... Um, salted ones and then three cinnamon sugar ones. So again, the cinnamon sugar ones, um, you don't do anything with them right now. You just uh, bake them the way they are. And for the um, salted ones, you're gonna sprinkle the salt directly on. And then we're gonna bake it for 12 to 15 minutes until it's golden brown.
Okay, so here are the steps again. Shape your pretzels. Boil them 20 to 30 seconds in the baking soda bath. And then sprinkle them with salt for the salted ones, or leave them plain for cinnamon sugar ones. And then bake them for 12 to 15 minutes until golden brown. So my timer has gone off. Here are the pretzels. So I've just flipped it over. I hope you can see that. So that's a, a good color. So these are done. Um, I'm going to set them aside over here. So the um, salted ones are done. There's nothing else to do with them. Um, you can just eat them. The plain ones, the ones that you've um, that you want it, that you want to make into um, cinnamon sugar ones, just need melted butter brushed on top of it, and then um, we're going to put them into the cinnamon sugar here. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this up into, in the microwave. So these three right here are the ones that um, need cinnamon sugar on it. So they're still really warm right now. I'm going to just brush the, the butter on top of it. If you don't have a brush, you can just use a little spoon or um, if you're comfortable with it, just your finger, if it's not gonna burn you. And then over here, we'll take that. And the sugar. So just a quick note, the cinnamon sugar pretzels get soggy after the first day. So do not put the butter or sugar on it until you're ready to serve or, or consume. What you can do is toast it in the toaster or warm it up in the microwave, then brush the butter and add the sugar on the day that you're ready to serve it. You can store the leftover pretzels at room temperature for up to three days. And that's it. These are done. Yeah, like I said, the one way, um, I don't know if you've ever baked bread before, bread is obviously thicker, but you'll have to open up the middle, like the thickest portion and pull out the dough that's in the middle. And if it rolls up and it's sticky, like this is not sticky, it's not even sticking to me, um, fell off. Um, it, is, it is probably raw. Um, you can, sometimes you can even smell it if it's raw dough. But like I said, if, yeah, if, if yours is uneven, you might wanna check 
Um, you can put it in the oven longer if you need to. Um, I am fairly certain if you put it in there for another five minutes, it'll probably still be okay. We just, we're obviously, we just don't want to burn them at this point. 